Hello friends! My name is Mary and I am here today to tell you about a new book by Aviad Rubinstein and myself about algorithms. Now there are plenty of fantastic algorithms books out there, but in retrospect I think there was really a glaring hole, um, some might say an urgent need, in the algorithmic literature landscape, which our book finally, thankfully, fills. Because our book is entitled Algorithms for Toddlers. Um, so yes, this is a real thing. We actually did this. A nice hardback book. Um, if you would like to purchase a copy of this book, either for a toddler in your life or if you're an inner toddler, you may do so at the link in the description below. Uh, but what I'd like to do for the rest of this video is let's just have a, a little bit of story time. So I'd like to read this book to you. Uh, yeah, so let's just dive right in. Algorithms for Toddlers by Aviad Rubinstein and Mary Wooters. What is an algorithm? Glad you asked. An algorithm gives instructions to do a task. And here we see our first example of an algorithm with Hippo here. Step one, put on socks. Step two, put on shoes. Rabbit tells us that algorithms are used by computers too, while Pig wonders, do computers wear socks and shoes? There are lots of algorithms, not just one. Hippo's is faster, but Bear's is more fun. Here's Bear's algorithm. Step one, put on socks. Step two, dance. Step three, put on shoes. Now algorithms come in all different stripes. In the rest of this book, we'll see some of the types. Our first type of algorithm has an idea that's quite nice. To solve a hard problem, solve an easy one twice. Rabbit tells us that this type of algorithm is called divide and conquer. Let's see an example. Here, Rhino notes that this picture is too big to color, and we have this big uncolored picture here. And Turtle says, I have an idea. Step one, divide, and they'll rip the picture in half. Step two, conquer. They each color their own halves and then put it back together. And now we have this beautifully colored picture. Although Pig wonders, maybe it should be called divide and tape? Now, if you still can't solve the smaller versions, divide them again. That's called recursion. To see an example, here we have this giant picture. And Turtle says, whoa, how are we going to color this? Fortunately, they have some friends. Here comes Hippo and Bear, who are saying, we can help. Now, what are they going to do? They take their big picture and cut it in half again, but then they take each of those halves and cut them in half once more. Now we have four pieces, and each one of our friends can color one of the pieces. When we put it all back together, we get our enormous colored picture. Pig points out that we're doing the same thing to the smaller problem, that is cutting it in half, that we did to the original problem. That's what recursion is. Now we'll move on to our next sort of algorithm. DP algorithms give you the power to build, for example, a really tall tower. And Rabbit tells us that DP stands for dynamic programming. Here Hippo and Penguin have built this really tall tower out of blocks. How did our friends get the red blocks so high? Hippo doesn't have wings and Penguin can't fly. To see how they use DP or dynamic programming, Pig tells us that one of the hallmarks of DP is using the same work over and over again. Can you spot how Hippo and Penguin do this on the next page? So here's what they do. First make the first floor, that's easy to do. Hippo just pushes one block there to make the first floor. Then use the first floor to build level two. That is, we're going to use our ability to make the first floor by adding another little block here. And then Hippo and Penguin can use the first floor as a stepping stone to help put on the second floor. Using floor two, we can build the next, and so on and so on, till we've finished the rest. And we see at the end, they've got this whole big staircase thing that they've built, and they're using it to help put on the very last red block. Notice that the same block, say this one, gets used again and again for lots of different steps. That's one of the hallmarks of dynamic programming. Then, I guess they have to clear away all this other stuff, and we have our really tall tower. For our next sort of algorithm, let's go to the pool, where we will see how to solve something called an LP. 
LP stands for linear programming. Summer is here and it's nice and hot. Can you help Hippo find the sunniest spot? So here we have Turtle and Hippo at the pool. We have this kind of funny shaped polygon pool and we can see that the sun is coming from this side so it puts kind of a gradient on the pool. Rabbit tells us that LP stands for linear program and it means finding the largest value of a linear function like the amount of sunshine in this example. Pig, who's chilling here in the jacuzzi, tells us that the sunniest spot is always at a corner. In this case, it's here. But how do we find which one? There's a bunch of different algorithms that can solve LPs, but here are two of them. Rabbit's simplex algorithm hops from corner to corner, and with each hop it gets a little bit warmer. So here goes Rabbit. Rabbit says there's no running around the pool, but they didn't say anything about no hopping. Meanwhile, the interior point method is also quite cool. Turtle uses this algorithm to swim through the pool. And we can see that Hippo here has already found the sunniest spot. To introduce our next kind of algorithm, we observe that for finding a cookie or finding your toes, sometimes it's good to follow your nose. Here Bear says, I smell cookies. And Rhino says, me too, I think the smell is coming from that way. Pig tells us an algorithm where you follow your nose, making greedy choices, is called a greedy algorithm. Can you follow your nose to find the cookie? And here we have a maze with a cookie here. So let's try to do it ourselves first. So if we go towards the cookie smell, we're going to go this way and then go up. And now we have a choice. We could go either that way or this way. But it looks like the cookie smell will be stronger this way, so let's do that. If we keep following our nose, ooh, looks like it's going to work but let's see what happens. Step one, follow your nose. Bear and Rhino are gonna run around the corner. Step two, follow your nose. Once again, run around the corner. Step three, cookies, hooray. Looks like our heroes found the cookies. And indeed, here was the path that they took. Rabbit notes that personally, they prefer the vegetables, while Pig's notes that some of us appreciate the finer things in life. However, while greedy algorithms are quite direct, user beware, they're not always correct. For example, check out this fiendish maze. To see what will happen, turn the page. Well, actually, before we turn the page, why don't we try to figure out ourselves what will happen? If we just tried to follow our nose, we'd go this way, and then up, and then over. Oh dear, that doesn't look like it's going to end well. Let's see what'll happen. Step one, follow your nose around the corner. Step two, follow your nose around the corner. Step three, broccoli. Oh no, that's not what we'd hoped for. Look at this giant broccoli. However, Pig reminds us that when life gives you broccoli, make broccoli aid. In this case, our noses didn't do well. Can you find your way to the tasty smell? Let's go back to that fiendish maze and see if we can. So here's the maze from the previous page. Let's see if we can find our way to the cookie. Whoops, let's not do that. Instead, we'll have to go this way, away from the tasty smell. Whoop, careful about the carrots and all the way around to the cookies, yay. But how would we do this algorithmically? Moving forward again, when we go to the next page, it asks, how will our heroes get out of this lurch? They can use an algorithm called depth first search. Rabbit tells us that DFS or depth first search can be used to explore a maze. Unlike a greedy algorithm, sometimes you have to go away from the tasty smell to find the cookie. So here's what depth first search would do in this maze. We start out going like this, and we're going to explore every possible avenue we can until we find the cookie. So we explore this corner, and then all the way up, whoops, carrot, turn around. Explore this corner, and this corner, and all the way around until we finally find the cookie. Hooray! Now, 
depth first search is more than just cookie hunting. Our friends can use it to go spelunking. And Pig tells us that spelunking means cave exploring. We can use DFS to explore the whole cave without getting lost. And here's Bear and Rhino in their spelunking gear. Now the book is at its best part. Design your own algorithm, make it an art. We know you can do it. You are so smart. We're already yawning and bedtime's in sight. Can you design an algorithm for going night-night? Now Rabbit tells us what the instructions are. Rabbit says, cut and paste these pictures in the order you want on the other page, or draw in your own steps. So let's see what pictures we have. First, we have brushing teeth. Next, we have bath time. And finally, we have story time. So now we can put these, or whatever we want, in any order that we want to make our own algorithm for going to bed. So I'll do it just for me, at least with my digital copy here. I'm actually going to design this algorithm in reverse order. So the last thing I do before going to bed is brush my teeth. So I'm going to put toothbrushing in step three. Yoop. And before that, I like to read a book, so let's put story time in step two. Now, while a bubble bath does seem appealing, I'm more of a shower in the morning kind of a person, and the instructions do say that we're allowed to draw in our own steps, so I think I'm going to do that for step one. So there we go. Here's Pig having a nightcap. Moving on, so we have this blank page here, which was the back of where we would cut things out of. And then the next page is, it's time for sleep. This book is done. Who knew that algorithms could be so much fun? And here we have Bear going to sleep and dreaming about all of the fun that they had with algorithms. The end. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation of Algorithms for Toddlers by Aviad Rubenstein and myself, Mary Wooters. Uh, and once again, if you would like to purchase a physical copy of this book, you may do so at the link in the description below. Thank you for watching. Okay, sorry, just, just one more thing. Because while I am here telling you about illustrated books on technical topics with which I am affiliated, I would be remiss if I did not mention Numerical Linear Algebra with Julia by Eric Darv and myself. Um, so this is not for toddlers, um, as you can see, it's sort of an actual, you know, real, real textbook. Um, it's for sort of advanced undergrads, beginning grad students, that kind of level. Um, but like Algorithms for Toddlers, it is illustrated, both with pictures of you know, matrices and vector spaces and stuff like that, as well as friendly cartoon characters. And as the name suggests, uh, there are accompanying Julia notebooks to help really solidify the concepts. So if you are into that sort of thing, you can find it from Cyan. Uh, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm really done now. Bye.